Hey guys, what's going on? It's me, Will Patson, with a new video, and today I'm going to be showing you and telling you a story about my first ever design client. But not only that, I'm going to be showing you exactly how you can get yourself your first logo design client, no matter how old you are, as long as you're over the age of about 15, 13, 15, 16, and you have some design skills. I'm going to be showing you how to get your first design client very easily. This video is sponsored by Dev Mountain. So some of you will probably know my story from posting it on this channel uh, quite a bit and that story kind of goes like this. When I was 17, I was at college and I didn't do too well at school at all and I didn't know any design sort of stuff then. I was interested in it because I had a friend who was interested in it at school and he was doing like YouTube banners and things like that. And uh, basically I took an interest at college. I was learning how to be a sexy secretary at college studying business administration. So basically learning how to write reports and learning the ins and outs of how businesses kind of work. I did enjoy it, but it wasn't something that I wanted to do. I liked the fact that I was learning about you know, business things, but it wasn't something that I wanted to do. So about two years into college, or about a year and a half, I got this idea that I really wanted to do design, and it was a passion of mine, because I'll be going home, and I'll be, you know, looking at tutorials, reading books, reading blog posts, and actually doing design uh, by myself, just for myself, and creating things, and learning how software works. Now, I wasn't very good academically at school. I actually failed every one of my uh, sort of GCSEs or exams, and that's not because I'm a thick, it's just because I didn't apply myself, I didn't want to, I didn't see any point. But what I was very good at was systems, and I knew how systems work and programs, and I was a proper computer geek, I absolutely loved playing on my computer, creating different things in Photoshop, like changing photographs and stuff like that. So what I did was about a year and a half in, I actually quit college, and I said during it, I don't want to do it anymore, I, I'm going to try and start up my own business and see how it goes. So I spent about three years after that learning the business of graphic graphic design and graphic design itself as a whole until I niched down into logo type design or logo design and hand lettering. During those few years I was really bad at all my work as you may be able to see in an earlier video I did when I hit 100,000 I, I showed you all my bad work. And I basically sat there for about six to eight hours a day every day just learning it and obviously trying to build a business somehow. Instead of going to university I went ahead and basically started up my own business as it's the only time in my life when I didn't really have a mortgage to pay or many any bills to pay I wanted to see if I could do it myself and I truly did believe myself I didn't actually have any doubts I was scared and anxious about whether it would work or not work or whether people would actually like my work and yeah I, everyone has those sorts of anxieties and fears but I went and did it and I was fairly confident and I knew that if I just put the time in and put the effort in people would see that. Then when I announced that I was going to be doing client work and at this time I had been doing my portfolio work for a long time that you will not see anymore. It's not available to see my old portfolio work but I was basically just grinding it. I was doing all these different designs and I was taking companies that I made up in my head and making brands out of them online and showing my process through it and my working out and I was looking for client work. Now my girlfriend slash fiance at the time who is now my wife had a friend who was also a friend of one of my neighbors. I knew my neighbors from when I was a little kid, but my neighbor was actually starting his own decorating business, painting and decorating, and uh, they wanted me to go ahead and brand them. And I thought this was a great opportunity. So what I did was I didn't know anything about charging. I didn't feel confident at all. And I think I charged like 30 quid, 30 pounds, which is, wait a minute, let me just work how much that is. 30 pounds in dollars. That would be 39 US dollars and 95 cents. So around $40 I charged for this. And basically I said, I'll do the logo and I'll design parts of the business card and stuff like that. Then I went ahead into my logo design business here. And this is when I was actually doing okay at logo design. This is when I was getting more confident in my work, knowing that it would work. Now, I didn't do much hand lettering here, I just used fonts. And what I ended up doing was I created a business brand that still works to this day. The company is called KM Williams, and it's a painting and decorating business, and I created a logo for them for like $40. I think he actually gave me more when he paid me. And I sent it over the files, and he got it on his van, and he got it on his like flyers, and 
it was a really strong brand. And that was my first ever design client. The coolest thing about this story is that the reason why I'm telling you about this is because it's been coming up in conversation quite a lot when I'm doing podcast interviews and like doing blog post interviews and stuff. When it talks about my first real clients. Now, the only reason why I'm really stoked about it and I remember it is because of a couple of reasons. The first reason is that I designed this logo when I first started and although I would make changes to it now, like a few changes, it still works and it works in a really good way and it is looking better than most of the other painting and decorating businesses around, which is a great thing. And the second reason is because my neighbor's van is normally parked outside of where I work, so I see it every time I leave work and it's a constant reminder of where I came from in design with my skill set and how much I was charging. It's a constant reminder. And boy, that van looks awesome still. It looks amazing. I don't know if I have a picture of the van. I'm not going to put a picture up of it. I'll try and find the logo that I created for them as well and I'll feature it now. It's a very basic logo, but can I tell you, it just works and it works really well. And this was done years and years ago. So now you've heard my story about logo design and I only charged like $40 for it. And that is the catch to this. When you are doing logos for people, you may not be able to charge a lot if you haven't done lots of them. It's all about demand and who you are. Like if you've got a ton of people wanting your work, then that's when you can raise your price. When you're notable in the design community, that's when you can charge more because of your notoriety in the community. But if you're someone who's just starting out or maybe wanting to do it as a hobby, then charging a lower price isn't a bad thing at all just to gain the experience and to see the process. Because the more you charge your client, the more is expected of you to make sure that that works, that that branding or logo works. So you've heard my story now. Now, what about you? What can you do to actually get a client today? Like get a logo design client today. If you live in a small town, you'll find this probably a lot easier than if you were living in a big city. Word of mouth. Now, you probably think this is proper generic and cliche, but word of mouth is actually a huge factor when it comes to starting up a business of your own, especially freelancing, or if you're, especially if you're living with your parents still and you want to get into freelance design and you just want to have something to work on. If the people around you know what you're doing and they know that you're pretty good at it, then they're going to tell other people of it. So make sure you tell people that your services are open and that you would like to work with other people. And I'm guaranteeing you, you will get some work at some point. The second way to get a logo design client today is to ask your family. Now, this is your first, very first client. And you, even if you get paid or don't get paid, you should treat it as professionally as possible. No matter how much you're getting paid, treat it professionally because it's going to do you good for in the future so you can work out the process behind logo design, which you can check out in some of my earlier videos. But get your family to give you a brief, make up a company or design a logo for a business that's in your family or a friend of the family's business and just design one for them. Ask them to lay out a brief, asking them what they want and the goals that they want to have succeed, then design the logo based on that and see their reactions and get paid by their reactions to the logo. The amount of money that you earn on a logo is nothing in comparison to what you learn on the job of how to do the job. Because with logo design and especially freelancers, you normally learn on the job. So having that experience is often more valuable than a thousand pounds. And the last way that you can get a logo design client today is literally by going and asking people on either Instagram if they want either a free logo or a logo at a discounted price and you tell them that you're just starting out and you would like to work with them and by going into small to medium sized businesses in the local area that you live in. The main thing to keep in mind when you're doing this is to tell them that you're first starting out. Don't tell them that you know everything about logo design because if you do that, they're going to sniff some things a bit off about you because designers, not just like me, but like many other people, they charge high prices for what they do. The great thing about doing it this way and not just expecting financial payment is that you get a portfolio at the end of what could be real life work. You can write case studies about what you've learned in this. You can actually make videos on YouTube. You can take the logo if they don't use it and you can sell it to someone else online. And the most valuable thing that you have got from the whole experience of getting your first client, regardless of the money that's involved, 
is the experience and the learning experience from that. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. This video has been sponsored by Dev Mountain. If you're interested in learning UX design, Dev Mountain is a 12 week UX design course that you can take. It's intended to get you a full time job in the industry. So if you want to learn more about this, click that link down below in the description and I will catch you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Goodbye.